Hi, and welcome to today's YouTube Jazz Guitar Lesson. In today's lesson, I'd like to teach you how to use a really cool outside soloing concept in your jazz guitar practice. This concept can be used to generate some kind of altered tensions over five chords, which is always a really good thing to practice in jazz, especially over two five ones. So um, this technique is really recommended if you've been playing jazz for a little while already. If you're a complete beginner to jazz guitar, um, I'd recommend getting a grasp over what a two five one is and using arpeggios to solo over two five ones first and diatonic scales before looking at this, because if you don't know that and you come straight into this lesson, you might be scratching your head a bit. So with that in mind, um, you know, if, if you do know a bit about jazz guitar already and you're looking to spice up your solos with some different sounds, then this is, should be a beneficial lesson for you. Um, as per usual, I've got a free um, article on the website which explains all the stuff we're going to be talking about in tab and notation. I've even got a few MP3 audio examples which you can listen to as well. So go ahead and load that up if you'd like to get tab and notation to go up a lesson. So, Without further ado, let's get zoomed in and let's learn how to play outside over a, a 2 5 1. I hope you enjoy the lesson. <laughs> of today's lesson we're going to be looking at playing over a 2-5-1 in the key of G so that's A minor 7 for a bar, D7 for a bar and then G major 7 for a bar as well. So if you're kind of new to jazz guitar and you haven't explored the 2-5-1 previously I really recommend checking out some beginner jazz guitar lessons which will teach you to kind of outline all these chords just using Kind of arpeggios and things like that and emphasizing chord tones because it's really important that you can play over a two five one <laughs> using kind of chord tones and things like that before looking at all these different outside um, soloing concepts so with that in mind um, let's discuss what we're going to be doing so for the a minor seven chord we're just going to be playing a minor and thinking of an a minor a minor tonality, so that can just mean thinking of you know just an A Dorian scale. So that's you know fairly straight ahead. You should be used to doing that by now if you've been playing jazz for a while. Over the D7 chord, we're going to be thinking of a B flat minor tonality. So just to kind of give you a rundown of what these intervals are against the D7 chord, I'm going to use a B flat Dorian scale just to kind of analyze the intervals. So a B flat. That's the uh, sharp five of the chord. Always a nice chord tone to use on a resolving, resolving dominant chord because if I play um, a D7 with a sharp five as the top melody note, and then I go to a G major seven, you kind of hear it works quite effectively when it resolves to a one chord. Okay, so there's a B flat, the first note is C, is the uh, flat seventh of the D7 chord. That's um, always a good strong chord tone to use. C sharp is a race seventh, and that really is kind of a funky note choice to use over a D7 chord. However, this is a lesson about playing outside, and I'll show you how you can use some of these chord tones in just a minute. So, so far we have the B flat, C, C sharp, then go to the E flat, which is the flat nine. Always a nice um, chord tone to use on a resolving dominant chord. And then go to the F, which is a sharp nine. Another chord, another good chord tone to use. You know, especially when you use these two together. When you go sharp nine, then you go flat nine, and then you go to a one chord. Always a nice combination of intervals to use. So a G, which is the eleventh. That's a nice. Um, chord tone to use as well. A flat, which is the uh, sharp 11. That's a really good chord tone. And then we're ultimately back to the B flat, which is where we started off there. So, some kind of um, outside notes then. It can produce a really nice sound over a dominant chord. 
So, so far, A minor 7, we're going to be using A minor sounds. And then for D7, B flat minor. And then guess what's next? For G major 7, we're going to be using B minor. So when you start to play over the chord progression, there's various ways in which you can use these kind of scales to do it. The first one which I've notated on the uh, web article here is um, through rising semitone motifs. And the motif that we're going to be using comes from Honeysuckle Rose, uh, and it sounds like this. And that's kind of a popular jazz cliche, you'll hear that in the playing of musicians like Charlie Parker, and I've even got um, the 251 lick lesson on this channel that uses that um, in an example. So you can check that out if you want to. So anyway, in this first example, the rising semitone motifs, all we do is we'll play the honeysuckle, ro honeysuckle um, rose lick through each of the chords. So A minor, we've got... Then for the D7, we think B flat minor, the honeysuckle rose motif is moved to the semitone, which sounds a bit strange, but then it resolves to... A G major 7 and then you can finish this on a circle rose riff if you want on the um, C sharp when you're playing it over the G major 7 and give it that sharp 11 sound but if that's too dissonant for your ears you can just resolve it to the B natural so you can go and just finish it there as well so the first example goes like this a 1, 2, 3, 4 and that's a really nice way of playing outside. You've got a really nice strong melody line that goes through each of these chord changes. And it's all, really all about playing it with conviction, really, hearing it and singing the lines so you can kind of execute it without the notes sounding too dissonant. So that's example number one. You can get tab and notation for that on the web article as mentioned in the beginning of the lesson. The second way um, is by using scales really, voice leading different scales and I know I've demonstrated um, the Dorian scale earlier kind of using that to generate the intervals against each of the chords but besides using that you can use a pentatonic scale which definitely be familiar for all the guitarists out there but rather than use it in kind of a rock in a, in a rock and blues way you can kind of voice lead through the scales together. So there's a really cool pentatonic scale pattern so the pentatonic pattern of a distant A minor 7 chord slowly sounds like this. Which is a really nice chord cool pattern that you can use over just a static minor 7 chord. But in this situation we're going to look at voice leading this over the D7 chord as well. So this pattern's all based in eighth notes, so we're going to be playing eight notes of this pattern over the A minor seven chord. Which brings us to this note, the C note. And from this point, we're going to try and voice lead into B flat minor pentatonic scale and the nearest available note from the B flat minor pentatonic scale that I'm going to use is this one here. And if we continue that pattern in B flat minor pentatonic scale, It'll kind of give us that. Okay, so so far we have A minor. And then when we get to C, we're going to go to B flat minor. So. Which is a really cool thing to do. And then from this note, the E flat, we can resolve to the uh, G major chord. Because we can resolve them to a nice strong chord tone. And you could keep the pattern going if you wanted to, but... Just for this instant, I've kind of stopped it after the five chord and finished it on the one chord. So all together, this lick sounds like this. Which is a really cool sound. And it's a really good for your um, technique as well because it's kind of a bit of a finger twister. But that hopefully gives you one idea of how it can work. Um, you can really voice lead any scales in, I just use a pentatonic scale because it kind of has a bit more of a modern flavour which I'm quite fond of but um, it'll work with like Dorian scales, um, 
really good and it'll work with kind of arpeggio based patterns as well so anyway I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you enjoyed some of the concepts that I talked about if you did enjoy the lesson please click the like button below and also please subscribe to this channel that way you'll get free access to all the future jazz and blues guitar lessons that I post um, I've really only just touched upon this concept of playing outside I've just demonstrated one which is you know using a minor sound using another minor sound a semitone above and then another minor sound yet yeah, again a semitone above that obviously you can go different directions and you can do you know a minor sound like A minor over a minor 7 chord and you could always use A flat over D7 chord but that's probably something that I'll do another lesson about um, in the future this is really just to give you kind of a brief introduction into playing outside it's um, a really cool concept to use but it's something that I recommend doing you know occasionally if you use it all the time it can kind of get a bit boring and pre predictable as with kind of any concept that you learn when you you know practicing jazz guitar techniques so maybe use it in conjunction with some of the more inside ideas that you do and I think it'll be most effective that way uh, the best way to really learn it is to use the backing track like like what I do in the videos and you know just spend hours you know going around these scales and different patterns and trying to think of some ideas of your own and then listen back to yourself and then the ideas that you like kind of write them down and use them you know make your own mix based off the concept that's the best way to kind of observe kind of learn it and get into your playing that's what I did here so thanks for checking out this lesson I hope you enjoy it and um, I'll see you next time